Alrighty, folks, welcome back to another episode of Carter Bajenko Fishing. And uh, today I'm going to be doing another little episode on co-angling. And uh, today specifically, I'm going to be talking about something I hear a lot. Uh, you know, you get off the water and a lot of guys, uh, co-anglers are going to be like, you know, my boat or back boat of me today. Wasn't any way I could catch any fish. And, uh, you know, with the introduction of live scope and, and, you know, offshore fishing become a lot easier now. Um, where you can target isolated fish, isolated uh, structure that has made it very hard at times to catch fish as a co-angler. Uh, but there's a couple different situations I'm going to run through uh, that I've experienced quite a bit as a co-angler and kind of how to deal with that. Uh, you know, at times it can be very tough and there's, you know, nothing you can do about it. I experienced that firsthand when I was at Rayburn uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, but there's definitely some things you can do to, you know, at least survive the day if you're fishing a multi-day tournament as a co-angler. Um, you know, there's a couple things you can do just to get a couple bites and, you know, keep you in contention. And, um, yeah. So, uh, first thing that I'm going to talk about, uh, is something that I hear a lot. And that's when your boater gets up on the bank, starts paralleling the bank. Obviously, you know, it's not against the rules to do something like that. And it's a very effective way for the person in the front of the boat to be fishing. Uh, you know, they can keep their bait in the strike zone for longer. And, you know, when you're fishing a reaction bait, like, a crankbait, spinnerbait, buzzbait, you know, some kind of reaction bait like that. Uh, it's a very effective way to fish, but it makes it real tough in the back of the boat. Kind of how I like to approach this. Uh, so the first thing is always, always, always pay attention to your electronics. Um, you know, your 2D, your mapping, um, everything like that. Uh, because you, while that right side, that bank may not be uh, available for you to fish because your boat is so close to the bank, uh, something I like to do is, you know, pay attention to your mapping. You know, a lot of times you may be going down a very straight bank. You look on the mapping, there's a point, uh, you know, that you see out there uh, or you're parallel on a bluff wall. Uh, you watch your 2D, there's a fish down there, pick up your drop shot, your net rig, whatever, you, whatever you got to drop on them, drop on that fish, catch it. Uh, so that's a big thing. And I'll do that literally anywhere, um, unless you're fishing like literally dirt shallow where it's not going to matter, obviously. Um, but regardless mapping is has got to be one of the most important things you know i would i would put that before almost any electronic that you have on your boat is you know mapping and uh you know it's extremely useful for me in the back of the boat um but the majority of the time though what i'm going to be doing uh when i'm paralleling a bank is i'm going to be thrown directly behind the boat um so there's a couple things you know that i can throw uh, a lot of times, like if you guys saw in the last video, I'm just going to be doing something basic like dragging a shaky head, a Ned rig, a Senko, uh, you know, just dragging. Uh, because a lot of you guys, you know, in some situations, fish will get spooky, I guess. You know, you're fishing really clear water. You're fishing super, super shallow where your control motor is taking up mud. You know, that's going to be kind of hard to, to do this. But, uh, you know, regardless of that, um, you know, just throwing over the back of the boat, a lot of times those fish are not gonna get as spooked as you think and just dragging a bait like a, a carolina rig is another another really good one i didn't didn't mention um but just dragging something behind the boat is a great way to get bites uh if you're fishing deep you know you can long line a jerk bait you can troll like an a rig um you know those are all great ways to get bit but there's a lot of fish that that boater goes over and um you know i can attest to that there's a lot of situations where uh i i remember at pickwick at the championship i'll throw in a clip here actually uh, I, you know, my boater is getting pretty close to the bank and I was literally just sitting in the back, had a three quarter ounce spinner bait in my hand and just let, you know, kept the rod tip up and just let it bounce off the bottom. Uh, I think I caught a couple of keepers doing that. Um, or I flipping a jig behind me, uh, you know, lay downs and stuff like that. And I had, I think a top 20 at that event. So, um, you know, that, that situation is, is, uh, pretty easy and not, not many people think about that, that, you know, your boater is going over fish. Uh, another Another big thing, okay, you hear this all the time, I experienced it firsthand at Rayburn, uh, is live scope, uh, you know, chasing suspended fish, it happens a lot on Champlain, where I've, I've been twice now, um, you know, your best bet with that, I'm going to say, is watching the, like I said, watching the mapping, you can kind of watch, uh, you know, Rayburn on the first day, I had three keepers, literally just throwing a swim bait into the middle of nowhere, making a long cast, and just, you know, reeling it real slow um you know 
throwing an A-rig, you know, all that kind of stuff that's going to hit the middle water column where those fish are at uh, is going to be key in that situation it was. Um, but kind of just throwing out, just keeping a bait in the water and making a lot of casts, you're going to run to a lot more fish than what you think. Um, you know, it, it really is a mind game. You know, your boaters up there just sniping them with the live scope. Um, but I do think, you know, being able to make a long cast, getting it far away from the boat, and you don't have a transducer pointed directly at their head, uh, I feel like, you know, that's also an advantage for you. Um, and, and I've seen that happen. Uh, Champlain, those fish weren't suspended, but more so they're were, they were kind of just roaming around the bottom. And I did really well uh, this year out of the back of the boat. My boater was, you know, sniping them with live scope, but I was making long casts. And I really think because it was, I was getting it far away from the boat, uh, the transducer wasn't pointed right at them, that that, you know, helped me get a lot more bites. And we literally had the same weight that day. I had 19.6 and he had 19.8 or some high 19s. Um, but that that is a great way uh, to get bit. You know, it is it is really, a lot of times it can be hard. Like second day Rayburn, I zeroed watching my boater catch 20 keepers. So, it, it, you know, you just got to keep a bait in the water in that situation. Uh, kind of just pay attention where those fish are at in the water column. Ask your boater, you know, watch your 2D and your mapping and, and stuff like that. Um, and then another big thing is fishing brush piles, fishing stumps, isolated cover. Uh, that's really hard, uh, especially when you're offshore and, you know, your boat is spot locked on a brush pile or something like that. Um, I mean, best thing you can really do in that situation is watch your 2D, uh, drop on anything that you see. Uh, watch your mapping if there's anything around the area to cast at uh, even if it's just the bank just cast fish real slow and you know really you just got to hope that you run into like a keeper or you know just a ghost fish kind of swimming around but just keeping a bait in the water is the biggest deal with that um and then another thing is is when your boater power pulls down uh kind of same same concept but shallower uh, you know, I saw this a lot at Okeechobee, like my boater would power pull down and, uh, you know, bed fish or, uh, you know, really pick apart a mat or something like that. Uh, what I like to do in that situation is really just fish around, just fish really, really, really slow. Uh, kind of depends on how long your boater's there. But I mean, there was this one uh, boater I had in Okeechobee. I got a clip of it actually. Uh, we power pulled down. He was fishing this little pocket. There were several bed fish up in front of him that he was fishing. And I was literally just pitching to the side. I had a weightless Senko on, so you guys know how long that takes to fish. And I would just flip it in every little hole and crevice I saw in the side of the grass um, and let it sink down. And, you know, kind of depends on your area, but I, I was able to get several bites that day and had a good tournament. So, um, you know, also making long casts, just really just picking apart everywhere around you, even if it doesn't look that good, just keeping a bait in the water. It's the biggest thing with that. Um, and then another thing is, uh, you know, fishing docks. Uh, you know, it's pretty much the same concept with, with uh, you know, going down the bank, uh, like I just said. Um, you know, docks, a lot of times it, it can be hard to fish behind somebody because uh, if you're fishing, they're fishing them real slow and like, like I said, power pulling down, really picking it apart. Um, a lot of boaters will fish that stuff with, uh, you know, what what I would consider to be like a big fish bait um, and really picking apart every piling. Um, you know, in that situation, I would say just like I said in the last video, you know, a wacky rig, a drop shot are going to be big players. Um, at the Potomac, my boater went up and down this one dock, I would say probably five to six times and was literally flipping every single piling with a jig. And I would come back behind him with a drop shot, you know, fish kind of just literally just let it drift in the current and just hold my rod. And I got several bites. I think I had a four pounder off that um, and several other really good fish that helped helped uh, me win that event. And, you know, it's it's gonna be harder in, in different situations. Like I know in Winnicani, when I go up there and fish as a co sometimes, uh, those docks are really shallow and clear. And like, there's one fish under there and you, you know, the boater knows skip a wacky rig up under there and catch that fish then it's really hard for you um but or like james watson i drew him on table rock and he was doing like pretty much the same thing really clear water 
And there's a lot of situations where it can be hard to fish docks as a co-angler, but um, you know, that's the best advice personally that, that I could give uh, as far as that, uh, just a drop shot or a wacky rig, just throw something a little bit more finessey than, than what your boater's doing. Um, but those, those are really like the main things that I could think of as far as, you know, uh, really tough situations in the back of the boat that I've had. Um, but yeah, that's, that's a wrap pretty much for, for what I got for today. Uh, let me know down in the comments what you guys want to see. Uh, I'm actually headed to Toho tomorrow and be filming for the Drury Bass Fishing Team for their national championship. Unfortunately, I did not qualify this year, um, but I think it's going to be a good learning experience for me to get a little bit better with the camera and, uh, you know, kind of kind of see what these boys can do down here in Florida this week. So um, be on the lookout. I'm going to upload it probably on my channel and Drury uh, Bass Fishing Team's channel. And then... Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much a wrap for the video. Let me know what you guys want to see as far as content. And uh, yeah, see you guys in the next episode.